So with a regular split system, we look at the difference between condenser saturation and ambient air, and that difference can tell us a lot about how our heat exchange is doing. It also could tell us a little bit about the load, but we're not going to worry about that. What we're going to worry about is what does that mean for a chiller? Now, a air-cooled chiller, it'd have a very similar principle. What is our condenser saturation to ambient. A lot of modern equipment, it's not uncommon to find a condenser coil that can maintain a 10 to 15 degree difference from ambient. But when we get into water-cooled equipment, those same kind of numbers don't really apply because, well, we have a very different medium and we use a value called approach. Hi, how you doing? I'm Holden Schamberger with HVAC Time and Chiller Academy. My main specialties are chillers and that's what we're here to talk about today. So, with condenser approach, what we're actually measuring is our ability to transfer heat. It's that's really what it comes down to. And a lot of these other numbers we use on regular air, or I guess air over coils, split systems are to use. They're very other similar forms of measuring heat transfer, but approach is actually a pretty effective one. One that we could use a lot more on some air overs. So how do we measure approach with a water cooled chiller? You're going to take your condenser saturation and your leaving water temperature. Now, this is very similar to evaporator approach, and that'll be a whole nother video, a whole nother topic. We'll cover that separately. I've got a little extra thoughts there. But essentially, that's all you're doing. Saturation versus leaving water, that gives you your approach value, which is going to be an evidence of heat exchange. How well are you trading heat off? Now, the type of condenser you're using affects what that approach value will be. If you're using a shell and tube, meaning that you have a big round cylinder with a bunch of tubes in the middle, which is what most of your like, centrifugal chillers you would think of, those are going to be a shell and tube condenser. Those will typically run a... Uh, about a three degree on the top end. So anything more than three, some machines I've seen try to push that to four, but anything more than three degrees of approach there, you've got a problem. Something is not exchanging heat properly. So an example of some things that would cause that would be like, if you have dirty tubes, really, really dirty tubes are uh, gonna allow enough fouling that we can't transfer heat properly. Or if you're not, controlling your oil properly through the system you're going to have very oil latent discharge gas coming into the condenser that can get on the tubes that's going to influence your heat exchange you could also have non-condensables get into the refrigerant that's going to influence your heat exchange and another common one while maybe less common is laminar flow okay so this will be a whole nother topic whole nother video i can do about this this one also tends to be a little more controversial but in the short your pumps are flowing too much water through the barrel. The barrel cannot f create the turbulent flow that is required for proper heat exchange. Because of that, the water turns laminar, less heat gets exchanged. Now, again, I'll, I'll make a whole separate video. This is a actual event that happens. This is something that we have to address and deal with at times and it goes back to engineering and design and well, why is there even enough pumps to allow that to happen? Well, again, we can argue about that some other time. But basically, the short to the laminar, there's too many GPM. Like we're trying to force too much through that barrel and it's not trading off heat like it's supposed to, blah, 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 blah. And if you walk up to a centrifugal that's having trouble with surging or such, this is a really quick and fast first place to start. Most of your HMIs, your human interfaces on the chillers, are going to have uh, the approach values given to you. Uh, so typically that's a very commonly measured item. So I, I would utilize that. Not all machine will though. So some, some of them you will have to calculate for yourself. So what other types of condensers would we have? Well, in the event that maybe you've got some specialty machine, I know there are some out there that you say a brace plate or even tube and tube heat exchangers. So when you get into those other styles, you're going to be dealing with more of a 10 degree. 8 to 10 is pretty typical for those from an approach value in, in terms of before you have an issue. So what I mean by have an issue, 
most of your, even your shell and tubes, which should top out at about three, they usually will still run if everything's like proper half a degree to a degree and a half is pretty normal even two degrees fine depending on just how efficient of a system and how well it's tuned it's when you hit three or more that you should start asking questions well in the same way uh, with these other styles of heat exchangers they should top out between eight and ten degrees now they might very typically run four to six and run really smoothly and that'd be what's normal for them but as conditions begin to influence it, that's where you start to see that higher value. So these are some of the situations on how we use condenser approach and how we can improve our troubleshooting in the process. Again, we're gonna take condenser saturation, subtract the leaving water from it because our saturation has to be warmer than our water. That will give us an approach value. Depending on what type of heat exchanger will depend on what kind of range and conditions you should expect. And if this was really helpful and you'd like some more training like this, go to chilleracademy.com. I have some actual courses that I've put together where I'm helping you learn chillers from the ground up. Or if you're more advanced, I also have a centrifugal course available currently. You can go take it for that and get familiar with the YK centrifugal. MTT, make the time for your family, for your spouse, for your kids. They really need you. We'll see you around.